If there's one tip that I could give someone when it comes down to what they eat, it would be to not consume fats and carbs. Okay, there's other things that we could talk about, and there's definitely close seconds there. But the reality is, there's a reason. Okay, this does not mean that you need to be concerned with some of the carbs that are coming in from a starchy vegetable, or you don't need to become obsessed over it. But it's just something that you can plant in your brain to really be cognizant of. And now there's some more compelling research at the mitochondrial level. So the latter half of this video is going to be explaining this relatively new research, and it's fascinating. And it explains why not mixing fats and carbs is the way to go, but also why periodic shifts away from low carb and back to high carb or moderate carb and back and forth and fasting really work really well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's break it down. But first, if you haven't already, please do hit that red subscribe button and please hit the bell button to turn on notifications. That's extremely, extremely, extremely important. All right, let's rock. So first I have to recap what I've talked about in other videos and the reason you typically don't want to combine fats and carbs a whole lot. Okay, when you eat carbohydrates, your body produces insulin. Your pancreas produces insulin. Insulin is like a key to the cell. Okay, without insulin, the cell doesn't really open and it doesn't really let glucose in. But with insulin, you open the door, okay? You open the door and you let glucose into the cell. The problem is you've opened the door. I mean, that means that the person that's following you into your home can get in too. What that means is when you open the door to the cell to let the glucose in, fat goes in too. So if you consume glucose along with fat, you have a higher chance of that fat going into storage because insulin has been spiked. Okay, not only this, but it can play a role with a lot of absorption. It can, anyhow, there's a lot of different rabbit holes we could go down with that. And there's a lot of people that will uh, combat that and say that that's not really the case because there's still the argument that when you consume fats, it slows down the absorption of the carbohydrates, thereby making it so it's not as big of a glycemic impact. That is true as well. However, what we're storing is what I'm really focused on. But it gets deeper when we look at the mitochondrial level. So this is really fascinating stuff. I wanna make sure that I say that carbs are not bad, okay? Carbs just, they need their own time, okay? For example, I generally prefer fasting over ketosis simply because it allows me a period of time to be very clear when my body is utilizing fats. During my fasting period, my body has no choice but to utilize fats. And then during my eating period, if I'm not doing low carb, I can have carbs come in. So it's very clear and defined. Fat, carbs, okay? So this doesn't just happen at the small meal level. I think it should happen at a grandiose macro level too. Let me explain what I mean by that. At the meal level, sure, be cognizant of your fats and your carbohydrates. Try to have one meal that's fat oriented. Try to have another meal that's carb oriented. Doesn't mean it needs to have zero grams of carbs or zero grams of fat. You just make a conscious effort, right? But the same kind of thing when you back up. Over the course of a year, do you have phases where you focus more so on low carb and then phases where you focus on more moderate carb? And when we explain this mitochondrial study in a minute, it'll make sense as to why. So this study was published in the journal Cell and it takes a look at what is called metabolic gridlock. And it demonstrated that our mitochondria, the energy powerhouse within our cells, which I say all the time, function the most optimally when they are deriving fuel from acetyl coenzyme A very distinctly from either glucose or free fatty acids. Okay, the mitochondria itself operate best because what happens is they have opposing signaling pathways. That means what the mitochondria has to implement to utilize fat for fuel is totally different than what it has to implement to utilize glucose for fuel. Neither are necessarily bad and neither are necessarily good. They just deserve their own time. So if we consume fats and carbs together, the cell or the mitochondria is just going to operate preferentially on what it's already primed to operate on. Okay? So if you're a primary glucose burner, if you aren't in ketosis or you don't do a lot of fasting or anything like that, and you have fats and carbs come in together, the body is going to use the carbohydrates and not really oxidize the fat and vice versa. If you only do low carb and keto all the time and you never expose yourself to the occasional carbohydrate, your body is going to be glucose intolerant and not know how to use those carbohydrates. It's important to be metabolically flexible and use both all the way down to the mitochondrial level. The other thing we have to remember is that glucose and fats have antagonistic signaling pathways. Okay, when we consume glucose, 
it signals all these different things to happen in our body. Not necessarily good, not necessarily bad, just different. When we consume fats, we have a whole different array of signaling that occurs, a whole different process. Not necessarily good, not necessarily bad. But if you're fueling one type of fuel or substrate at a time, it gives your body enough time to send a very clear signal and get the maximum benefit out of that macronutrient before moving on to the next. So if you consume breakfast with higher fat, lunch with maybe higher carb, it all depends. You have to look at the scale in which you are looking at. But again, this is why intermittent fasting works so well in my case, because it's very distinct. During my fasting period, it's very clear that my body's using fat, and when I break my fast, I can implement carbs strategically. By the way, if you're curious what I eat after I break a fast, you can utilize Thrive Market down below in the description. They're an online membership-based grocery store. They are a big supporter of this channel, but I've partnered up with them and created specific grocery boxes. So what that means is I've picked out the things that I like to eat during my eating window with fasting or what I eat on a keto day or et cetera, et cetera, for different days. So really cool stuff, but they're an online membership-based grocery store. So they deliver groceries right to your doorstep makes it so you don't have to go to the grocery store, super convenient, very good prices, highly, highly recommend them. So use that special link down below this video in the description after you finish watching it. The problem we face if we're just doing a ketogenic diet and we're not doing periods of intermittent fasting or not implementing carbohydrates is our bodies get used to just free fatty acid utilization. Okay, so they're just using the fats and they're not getting the exposure to the glucose that we need. Now we've seen this in a few studies where people or mice that go on keto for a long period of time, then when they do have carbohydrates, they become what is called glucose intolerant. That means that their cells don't know how to use glucose, so their blood sugar goes up and they feel a little bit dysfunctional. Well, that's not the end of the world because that goes away after a few weeks, but you have to stick with it. You have to stick on the carbohydrates for a little while for the body to get used to utilizing those carbs again. My goal, at least with my physique and my overall just aspirations, is to find that perfect balance where my body can leverage the most amount of fats for fuel, but also the most amount of carbohydrates. So I'm never losing my fat adaptation, but I'm also never losing my ability to utilize glucose efficiently because I want it all personally. I want to be the most optimal human being that I can be. I want to be able to utilize fat as a fuel source and stay lean, but I also want to be able to utilize glucose when I go just all out in the gym, right? Or when I need to go all out in a sprint. I want to be able to choose. And my mitochondria needs to be able to choose without my conscious thinking here. So that means I need to constantly be dabbling back and forth. And this study was just really, really, really convincing for me because it just shows it at a cellular mitochondrial level that our energy factories prefer to have it very clean. They don't like blurred lines. And you shouldn't like blurred lines either because when it comes down to what our body needs to use, we need to pave it out. We need to carve it out for it specifically. So no more massive insulin spikes along with fat. Okay, try to separate them a bit, but I wanna make sure I am so abundantly clear, you do not need to drive yourself up the wall with this. Concerted effort, not completely relentless effort to the point where you drive yourself just up the wall. As always, please keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow, and please do check out Thrive Market and help support them so you can help support this channel as well. See you tomorrow.